anytime soon. Well, to talk more on the escalating tension in Egypt, let's cross live to uh, Cairo. Middle East uh, journalist Hugh Miles is live on the line with us. Thank you, sir, for taking the time to speak with us. Uh, already some reports of clashes, although by and large, we have to say, so far the rallies have been peaceful. Where do you think this situation is trending at the moment? Well, it's all to play for at the moment. I mean, we're, we're all amazed by the vast size of the crowd that has turned out today, uh, which is, I think, the biggest yet throughout this uh, long uh, revolution going on in Egypt. So this has put enormous pressure on the Muslim Brotherhood uh, to stand down, something which Morsi says he has no intention of doing. So we'll see how many people will stay in the square and whether people are prepared to uh, to uh, push the, the system like they did under Mubarak, in which case, in a matter of uh, days or weeks, we might see Morsi has no other choice but, but step down. Well, certainly a volatile situation, but if it does get to that level, do you think that Egypt is, is, is ready to handle that kind of situation, uh, just coming off fresh from, from, from the previous uprisings that had taken down Mubarak? I mean, this is, this is serious stuff. Well, indeed. I mean, it's completely uncharted territory. And the, the fact is, there is not much of an alternative to President Morsi. You know, he did win the election, after all. Uh, and the Muslim Brotherhood is one of the uh, only well-organized institutions in this country. Uh, so if he did stand down, it would be very unclear who would run the country. Uh, presumably the army, uh, in the short term at least. But they've been running the country uh, for much time since the revolution in 2011, and uh, they weren't popular either, uh, which raises the question, is Egypt beyond governance? Can anyone fix all the problems in this country? And certainly if it does escalate to the point of uh, Morsi stepping down, which is uh, probably completely unlikely at this point at least, I mean, he won with 51 percent of the vote. The Muslim Brotherhood, as you said, is strong. Uh, little indication that there would be an actual alternative, uh, in which case, I mean, this could really throw Egypt up into questionable turmoil for who knows how long. Well, indeed. I mean, Egypt is in deep trouble and, you know, it hasn't got any easier after today. Uh, but what we're seeing today is that the, uh, an extraordinary turnout from the Egyptian public, which is uh, really uh, put an end, I think, to the Muslim Brotherhood's plans to take over power in this country. Because what we've seen since they won the election by a very slim margin is that they have uh, tried to rule in a very dictatorial, inflexible way without uh, allowing other, other people to be involved. And, and now they're paying the price. Uh, for that kind of power grab that, that they've uh, that they've been trying over the last few months. And if we contextualize this with what's happening in the region, uh, do you see the sort of push towards Islamization, uh, something that, that, that that's spreading beyond Egypt? I mean, Tunisia is one clear example. Uh, where do you think this is heading when you look at the situation regionally? Well, the, the region is in a state of extraordinary flux. I mean, the situation is very dynamic. There's, it's, it's, I mean, obviously, the, the war in Syria, completely out of control. The consequences are uh, only now becoming clear. The, the next, uh, still unclear. The next six months are going to be critical. Sectarian intentions are rising. Uh, it, it's very unclear where the Middle East is going. I mean, at the moment, it looks like uh, in a few months or years' time, uh, even some of the countries that we recognize today might not exist anymore. So it's, um, uh, it, it, it's a very, very uh, fluid situation. But I think Egypt is not subject to outside influence. Uh, at the moment, what, what we've seen is the Egyptian people uh, saying no to interference in, in their destiny. They're trying to take back control from the Muslim Brotherhood, and they're saying, we want to have a, a secular, modern Egypt that is not ruled by Islamists. Uh, and uh, we, uh, there's no uh, foreign hand in what's happening in Egypt today. Uh, this is simply um, the Egyptian people making a very powerful statement. Well, although this is, of course, the Egyptian people making a powerful statement, as you say, I am curious, though, about Washington's uh, response to the ongoing uh, protests there. Of course, Washington has backed uh, the uprising that has led to the downfall of uh, President Hosni Mubarak. They've called on the protesters to use restraint so far. Uh, where do you see Washington standing uh, uh, on this uh, issue? Behind the opposition or not so much? I think uh, all Washington wants in what Washington wants in Egypt is to turn back the clock. 
and to have a uh, easily manipulated dictator who had the country firmly in his hands. Because Washington's agenda is a security of Israel, and they want someone who can deliver that to them. And they don't really care whether it's a communist or an Islamist or a general. Uh, they just want somebody who can take care of Israel's interests. But Washington is not very influential uh, at the moment. Nobody is. Uh, the fact is Egypt is a, a giant juggernaut that is uh, s speeding out of control, possibly going off a cliff. And uh, n nobody uh, has much influence over the situation. Uh, outside the country, with the possible exception of, of the, the, the Gutteries, who remain uh, the Muslim Brotherhood's uh, best lifeline now that they're under this pressure. Well, certainly a volatile situation that continues to develop.